So as you can see with that footage, that was a pretty scary event. And I'll first say I got very lucky. As you can see with the gun, there is no damage to it. And I did actually fire it later and it functioned fine. And also, I was not harmed in any which way. Now, it's important, it's bad that this happened, but what's worse from a mistake is if you don't learn for it. So I'm going to kind of look at what I might have done wrong. Now, there's two common causes to chain fires that I've read about and theories on why they happen. The first is a loose-fitting cap allows sparks to get by into the firing chamber from the previously fired cap, causing the cylinder to ignite. Now, I do think that this is a possible cause because of how cold it was. I was struggling to put the caps on. It was about 22 de degrees at the time. So, I couldn't do it with gloves on. If you took your gloves on, your hands pretty much rather quickly became numb, especially handling the cold steel. So, I'm not 100% certain... It would have been very easy without having good feel that I had a cap that wasn't maybe crooked or wasn't fully sealing the nipple off. Or it could have been not on there all the way and when I fired one of the previous shots because it was on the... I fired two normal shots and then the third one sent two of them off. Because I had two more remaining. So it's possible maybe the cap wasn't completely seen. Recoil from the first two shots knocked that cap off. That's a possibility. The other theory, and this is personally where I'm leaning on, is that it traveled through the... It, you know, the gas escaped from... You have gas that leaks at the cylinder gap. And some of that flame potentially could have ignited the other charge. Now, to prevent this, you are using grease. I was using boar butter at the time. The issue I had is this, when cold, pretty much freezes solid. I can show you. It's next to impossible to get it out when it's cold and I had some grease on it but I don't think I had it nearly enough you know I had a little speck on each cylinder and I don't think I had it completely sealed and I kind of was not thinking it was a real issue and I let it go that was a mistake on my part and, you know, they only had a little speck of grease in, and I do think it's, that's kind of my going theory is that there wasn't enough grease to actually seal off the ball. So, now the question is, what am I going to do to prevent this in the future? Now, there's, I'll first say, there's any time you're playing with, Things like this, there's always a chance something's going to go wrong, no matter how careful you are. Now, if you're careful, you can prevent 99.9% .9 of it from happening. But I don't, you always, as a reminder, wear eye protection. I did get, when this happened, some stuff splattered in my face. Had I not been wearing glasses, it's possible some of this could have gotten my eye and damaged my eye. I actually have marks on my glasses from this happening, a small speck. So always remember to wear eye protection. Another thing to... Now this is more of an issue if you are actually shooting a rifle. You might be tempted to do this. You know, hold it like this. The proper way to hold it is like this. With both hands behind this. Now... Two reasons for that. First, the cylinder gap. If you put your hand here, it's going to get torn up by the escaping gases. And had my hand been there, 
when this happened, I would have had a nice hole in it. But I think the first thing I'm going to start using is these. Now, I had some of these, but I wanted to save them. And generally, when we I've shot this in the past, I haven't used them. I bought these for use in the Lamette. But I do think that from now on, I'm always going to use them. I might try to make my own. These will, you know, these are grease patches that go between the ball and the powder. And that will provide another layer of protection. You know, so now the charge has to go through the grease on the end, the ball, and this fiber one. So I think if using these, this dramatically reduces the odds of that happening. I'm also, you know, because I struggled to get the grease out, I think, I think in general I'm going to avoid shooting cap and balls when it's less than 30 degrees out, 35 degrees. You know, there's enough days in Pennsylvania to go shooting. I really don't need to shoot a cap and ball when it's 20 degrees out, so... I'll have other guns I'll shoot when it's cold out. And I think I'm going to try, if I do want to shoot it when it's cold, find a grease that's not as temperature sensitive. I do think I have a couple that say a pretty liquid even when it's cold out. And I'm going to make sure from now on that it's just solidly coated in grease. Between the ball... Powder wall and a good coating of grease. I think that dramatically reduces the odds of this happening. And it comes to the cap. I'm just going to make sure do a double check. I should have done that to begin with. So, I, you know, it's always said. Mistakes will happen. You'll make mistakes. And I hope by seeing this video, that is a reminder that this is something with cap and balls that needs to be taken seriously. Like anything, don't get complacent. That's complacency bites you in the butt every time. And I hope this is a reminder, and I hope this video maybe can prevent some other people from having a, having a bad day. Again, I got lucky, but if it happens again, maybe I wouldn't get lucky. Maybe something would come back and hit me. You know, this cylinder that went off is pretty much clear. Same with this one, but... If one of these other ones, like down here, I don't know what would have happened. Or if multiple would have, two or three would have gone off, I don't know what would have happened. So, I'm going to, you know, I got lucky. Nothing bad happened. I'm going to learn from this. And I hope you can share this video to let other people see so maybe they can also learn from it. So, thanks for watching and have a good day.